Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today has appeared on the TV series Rookie Blue, Eyewitness, Kevin from Work, and 9JKL. He currently plays Officer Gene Clemens on the hit series In the Dark. Please welcome Matt Murray. Hey, what up, Cash? Matt, what is up, my friend? It is so good to see you. Oh, brother, it's good to be here, man. I, dude, we go back, bro. So, like, this is just, this is just fun, brother. This is just fun. I'm so proud. a long way, Matt. I am so proud of you. I mean, every time I see you, your career, ever since I've met you, it's like, oh, I got this show. Then, oh, okay, now I got this. And now it's, honestly, In the Dark was one of my binge shows during the pandemic, and I am pumped for season three. Man, In the Dark, you know what? When when I first, when I got In the Dark, uh, I, I had a chance to watch the, the, the pilot or something like that, and I really enjoyed it. And I was like, man, this tone, this tone of, of, storytelling is my my style like i love that like i love you know the nine jkls you know the lightness of that one eyewitness was a little bit of a darker tone and i love that so anytime i do like a a lighter tone thing i love to go over to the darker tone as well because i love that that kind of yin and yang balance of, of things so in the dark is an incredible balance of just kind of just life you know what i mean like how, how heavy situations can turn on the dime how our choices can get us into circumstances that uh we, we we thought we can handle you know um which actually you and i just said actually earlier we can't there are circumstances any circumstances in front of us we can't handle it's just we just didn't know we didn't have maybe the right pre preparation to handle these certain uh, circumstances so this show is actually all of that it's just people getting lost in choices that they've made and the kind of realms and worlds that that kind of takes them into so when I saw that, because of my kind of background, where I grew up, this is based in Chicago, I'm from Detroit. So immediately I was like, oh, okay, the people from Chicago, people from Detroit, very, very similar. You know, that was nice to be able to kind of just sit more into my culture, into this character. You know, I kind of uh, let loose and open up with that. And, and the writers and the team, just the, the everybody in the dark just, just allowed that. You know, they gave me they gave me the, the, the freedom to do that. And, um, and I'm, I'm so grateful for them and, and the show. And every time I, we read an episode, I just get super, super excited. Your character, Gene, Gene Clemens, you get introduced in season two and your, yeah. your character, Gene, he's very articulate and he's honorable. You get uh, partnered up with your superior, Dean Riley, who isn't those things. He's, let's call him a corrupt <laughs> cop. Is the opposite. <laughs> he's the opposite. And he's holding on to a lot of secrets. And there, I, I just loved, I mean, it really had me on the edge of my seat. Like, because you're there in the office, you're going off of the information he's getting you. You're saying, okay, this is our lead, go there. And he thinks he's going to get away with it. And then you're always a step ahead of him and you're just about to crack. And then it's like, oh, you know, he manages to get away. But, and you, you two had that chemistry throughout season two. And then yeah. right at the conclusion, you finally get him. Right. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of that had to do with uh, trust. You know, my character is very trustworthy. And so he trusted somebody who who stood up to the image that we all see and that the, the glorified image of, OK, he he uh, uh, he has his accolades. He's done this. He's done that. My character like idolizes him as a mentor. He's like, man, I can't believe I'm working with you. You know, like you're training me how to be a detective like this is amazing, you know, and from that trust, you know, it, it, it gets him hurt. And then season three is really him coming back from that hurt, you know, and understanding like he can't stop trusting. He's taking the position, you know, like this, this, this is not that, it's not that he messed up by trusting is that the, the, the system that he's trusting in that, uh, sworn to be honest is not being that so he's seeing now that wait a minute I, I'm not wrong for trusting somebody they're wrong for for abusing my trust and okay let me figure out let me not punish the ones who 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 did this you know uh, including myself let me figure out how to apply justice, how to apply order, how to apply honesty. And he gets caught up, he does, he does. There's moments where he finds himself with this battle of being honest with somebody uh, and not being honest with somebody in order to, to get justice. And him realizing as well, having to go through that, that kind of questioning 
having to realize like, is that true justice if I'm not being honest? You know, and am I am I shifting justice just because I'm using a little bit more honesty than this next person? That's not true. That's not full truth. That's still lying. That's still corruption. You know, and a lot of times, you know, he has to look into being compassionate. And what does compassion look like when you're working with people who are not compassionate? And that's where you just say, like, he has to be intelligent. He's got to be a problem solver. You can't just give up, you know, just because he hits the wall and realizes, oh, man, I can't trust these people in this way. That doesn't mean, like, I, I change up what I, like, I just got to shift a little bit of what I do. I don't have to stop trusting. I just have to, I've got to hit them with more truth, hit them with more honesty, you know, and, and be honest with myself and continue to build my team. And there's more hits. There's more hits, just like in real life. I really took on the challenge of, of really just focusing on how do we respond to these kind of things, these human things that happen every day. Not just human things. that happen to animals and plants all the time, too. We just forget that they have emotions and they go through all this stuff as well, you know, in their own way. So, you know, I just kind of, I, I really wanted to take in that kind of inspiration going into the season of what kind of responses can I be hold myself and this character to his highest uh, intelligence. I want justice. I mean, and you're so talented and I just love the thought and the energy that you put into this performance. And like you said, it really, you really draw these, um, these emotions from real life, from people that you've known in your life. And I mean, I've, I've had similar experiences uh, you had as well, just as far as, you know, I've, I've lost some people and there were at times early on in childhood where I was conflicted. I did, it was like, you could go this way or go that way. And a lot of those uh, scenarios that I went through really helped, molded who I was. And I just really look at the world and say, you know, I'm so grateful I went down this path. It was so tragic to lose certain people, but I, I'm always looking for the messages in life. I'm always looking yeah. for what are things telling me how to do? And just what I love about you as an artist and as a person is, you know, you really do care about your friends. You care about your community. You put everything into your work. And I just love how, like you were saying, you can go from Kevin from work uh, to, yeah. uh, you know, to eyewitness. I so there you go, 9JKL. Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer, right? yes. Representing characters that really do awful, awful things to people, you know, that are lost in that. And why, why, what, what happens to us? What makes us do those things? And, and those are the things I look into and try to have people feel something towards people who make these kind of choices. Just, just for food for thought. Just like, instead of being like, why would they do that exactly? No, answer, why would they do that? There's many, many why, reasons why they would do that. And when we look into that, then all of a sudden, compassion starts to automatically grow without us, without us trying to do it. We're just learning their story and what makes somebody do this. There are times in life where people are good or they're evil. I mean, in, in a lot of stories, that's how it plays out. What I like about uh, In the Dark and just and what I just find very interesting, too, is when um, when there's layers to characters. I like a character that's a bit flawed and you understand why that person is or that character is and what motivates them. Or I really just love character analysis and even just certain scenarios that you know we had discussed earlier, just friends and family that are no longer with us life isn't always as, oh, this is good or this is bad. Certain people believe that they're just strong in their beliefs. And unfortunately, it took them down a road that they unfortunately didn't make it out of. But when I see those kinds of scenarios played out, as you say, you you do with uh, your character, Officer Gene, you know, you really, you, you're saying what you really want to show from a cop's perspective and how you want, um, you know, your character to come across. Yeah, yeah, because it is, you know, cops do go through a lot. They're human beings, you know, when they put on those uniforms, um, there's still there's still human flesh and, and a human brain and, and emotions underneath all of that. And, you know, we, we, it's, it's easy to blame something very quick. It's easy, easy to put blame, shame, guilt, all of that onto something because we've all had to put onto us. So we know how to use it in the same way other people use it on us. So it's like a quick answer. It's a quick cheat. And... You know, even even the cops that, you know, make those decisions that uh, devastate families and uh, and communities, uh, it's it's still there's still an answer of why that happened. There's there's that job is is. It's it asks for so much, you know, it asks for psychology training, it asks for biology training. It asks for social training, you know, it asks for so much training 
that is not provided, you know, for that position, because that that position has to deal with a lot, and that that position can't be dealing with it on its own. You know, there's a lot of different things that are now changing. You know, where they're sending paramedics and a lot of other different people, you know, with police, so that uh, if somebody is 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 acting out in in physical violent ways, um, it's it's responded to in a way that that circumstance is able to be process registered and understood and understood techniques on how to safely bring it down and you can just see anybody who's at training in any kind of anything you know it rather that has to do with weapons or organization of any sort you know with martial arts or or police training firefighting training military it doesn't matter you know you can see if somebody has done the training or not you know and and all of that is the, the biggest muscle in our body, the most incredible muscle, this is our brain. And if there's not a, enough psychology training to understand what's in front of you, how can you physically do something about it without, without causing that ripple effect of trauma and, and, and pain? And that, because that's, that's just gonna re replay itself. It's just gonna, there's gonna be guilt, shame, blame thrown back, and then the infection of war. You always put out a positive message, whether it's supporting your friends or community and just really how you want to come across and the kind of work that you want to do. And you want to make people think and you, you, you are a genuinely you're a guy who wants the betterment of society. And I know that that means a lot to you and you've done a lot uh, to benefit the community. And I, and I really just I thank you for your time and and the work that you're doing. I appreciate that, Cash, man. You know, it's what we're stepping out in, outside to, you know, that's 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 built by us. You know, and, and we, there's a lot of work still to do, you know, with with how we operate as a species, as a species. That's what we are. We're a species. And right now we're, we're, we're a little bit lost and we have the intelligence and we have the 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 people that are out there that are doing incredible things to bring us together. You know, and then there's we also have the opposite, you know, doing the opposite. So, you know, the more when we talk to each other and, and not punish each other, you know, from what we hear. You know, let's let's hear it and then try to figure out how do we how do we solve that, you know, and but we got to keep going, though, because we're here. We're here. We're still breathing. <laughs> you know, we can we can either make breathing difficult for us or we can make it grateful. You know, I prefer to, to, to breathe gratefully. I'm with you on that one. I mean, I've had so many <laughs> ups and downs, highs and lows in life, losses, gains and you know, like we were talking about earlier, it's just really, I'm always looking for what can I do to better the situation? What can I do to make the world a better place? And I mean, I because I feel good when everyone else feels good. I mean, there's nothing more magical for me than to get on a set, have everyone in a good mood and be like, you know, we're creating something great. We're creating a story or a script that's going to really give layers to something that's going to um, inspire people. And that's where you come from too a lot, Matt, is inspiration. And again, I'm so proud of you. I can't thank you enough for your time. And my goodness, I mean, I'm tuning in tonight, okay? Everybody, you yeah. need to get the CW app and watch In the Dark, 9-8 Central. Matt Murray, my dear friend, thank you so much for your time. You're on a roll and keep rocking. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. You, you're amazing, Cash, brother. I'm so proud of you, and thank you for supporting me and everything, brother. You've always been that, and you, you're the same as what you're saying about me, brother. Always smiling, always positive, and that smile is earned. You have earned that smile. You've earned that smile, too, my friend. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Matt Murray today. You are on air with Cash. On air with Cash.